Hi guys, so time to do a little thermal mod again on another piece of tech from China. Now we should never have to do this if manufacturers can get temperatures right. But this Apollo Lake N3450 gets quite hot when gaming up to 99 degrees if you've seen my review of the Chewy Lapbook 14.1, which is what I'm going to mod today. So to start out, remove the eight screws on the bottom and then pry off the rear cover, which I've already done. So that will give you the internals. We need to go along here first and unplug the battery just so we don't short out anything in here. And make sure that you are not touching your cat or anything like that. Earth yourself and if you can use an anti-static bench and anti-static gear or anything. You don't want to touch anything around here. Short things out. And just as a precautionary measure, well a bit of a disclaimer here actually. Don't do this if you do not know what you're doing, you haven't opened up or done anything like this before, and I'm not responsible for you bricking your notebook, burning your house down, electrocuting yourself, whatever, okay? You do this all at your own risk. If you want to add an SSD, now is the time to do it, of course. So what you need to do is very simple. First, there's a screw that was here. Remove that screw. Screw it in here. This is just the counterweight for the whole notebook to stop it from tipping over. It also adds strength. So I wouldn't remove this. I wouldn't get rid of it to try and save weight. Anyway, simply get your SSD, which has to be a M2 spec one. And I would use the 22 by 42 size and insert that and push that in like so. That will sit flat. You can put the rear lid back on and you won't have any problems with that. An extra step, if you're worried about this moving around, I think it will be fine in the slot, but you can put a piece of tape over the top here to hold that in place. So before we get started here, I have a copper shim. Now you can get these from eBay and all sorts of places. They're very cheap. And this dimension, the size of it, is 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters, one millimeter thick. I think this will work quite nicely. I have done this many times before. So that's what I'm gonna put on top of the chipset. And later I will get a thermal pad as well to put on the top here to transfer heat away from the chipset onto the rear, which actually has this metal foil on it. That can help transfer heat, hopefully lower those temperatures by a good 10 or 15 degrees. That's what I'm after. Pry up the shielding here. This shields the, the RAM, EMMC, and the chipset. So get that up. We'll get this out of the way. There is the Apollo Lake N3450 there with a thermal pad on top of it. And you'll notice there's another thermal pad here on these two chips. Make sure you don't touch those. They are needed, of course. Now remove the thermal pad that was on there and then give it a clean. Now I'm using some Arctic Clean, but you can use just alcohol to get rid of any residue on there. Now the thermal pad that was on there felt quite cheap to me and it was actually starting to degrade a little. It was quite brittle. Now once you have that clean enough, put a little dollop of thermal paste. I'm going to use MX4, but any kind of paste will do. You don't need a super quality one on there. This is only an Apollo Lake. So I'm just going to put a tiny little pea-sized bit on there. Now if you go overboard here, don't worry too much about the excess because it's not. there's nothing really too close that's going to short out. So hopefully I don't put a stupid amount on like I normally do. It's quite tricky. That should do it. Oh, it's looking like too much actually. Now you could also use a thermal adhesive here. Might actually be a good idea to stop this thing from moving around. So I'm going to place this on the top now. And gently does it, trying not to touch anything and short things out. And then apply a little bit of pressure. Give it a move around just so that moves the paste evenly. Press, put some pressure on this. Quite a bit of pressure actually. And... That should do it. Now I'm going to put some thermal adhesive on the top of this so then it doesn't move when I put the shielding back on. Now to put a nice amount of thermal adhesive, this is, well it says thermal glue, same thing. On the top, a nice healthy amount so it really sticks down nice and has good coverage. Whoops, it's moving around a little. That's probably enough. That's actually quite a lot I've put on there. Put the shielding back on more like a heat spreader as well so put this on the top so obviously because this is now thicker than the half a millimeter thermal pad that used to be on there 
it's not going to sit down nice and flush. So you're going to have to probably apply quite a bit of pressure to that. And then push down quite hard in the middle to spread that thermal paste. Seems to be clipping in all right. All right, I went a step further because I actually found out they've got like this heat insulator material on the top here. So we don't want that. We want to remove that so we can transfer the heat onto the back. So I got rid of that. It's really hard to get off and you can see now it looks a little bit messy. I need to clean that up. Okay, so I cleaned that up a little. It still doesn't look very good, but I'm not too worried because I'm not going to be looking at the internals of this once I put this all back together. That's it. So I'm going to put now a 20, sorry, not 20, a two millimeter thick thermal pad here on the top about there in the middle. That's where the chipset is. I mean, you could use the whole size of this if you wanted to, but I don't think that's necessary. I'm just going to put this here. And so that will then have contact with that foil on the back of the lid about here, transferring heat onto the back of the case. Of course, this is going to make the rear of the case get quite hot. That's to be expected. Now, don't forget to plug the battery back in. And when you put the rear case on, make sure you start at the bottom first, clip that in, and then work your way around clipping it back in, put the screws back in, and it actually fits down perfectly fine. There's no bulge right there where the thermal pad is, so that should have good contact with the rear now. Okay, so results are really good. I've been playing Counter-Strike, I think, now for about 5-10 minutes, where it would have got up to at least 89, 90 degrees in that time. And it's hovering all the time around 59, 61. Really good results. Let's have a look at HW Info. Very quickly, I have that running in the background there. So 62 degrees is, well, 64 is the maximum in 10 minutes, where it would have got up to at least 90 before gaming. And Counter-Strike actually, as a result, feels a lot smoother. So that thermal mod works really quite well. And I think it's kind of a must if you're going to get this and you want to game on it or you want maximum performance. Now, of course, the underside of it is heating up a lot more now. Instead of 33 degrees, it's now getting quite warm up to about 38. And finally, after stressing it now for an hour, it has not gone over 70 degrees, so that proves that this mod does a fine job indeed of lowering temperatures a huge amount over the stock solution there. So best of luck with your own mods there. Once I've done this mod now, I feel this is one of the best notebooks at the moment for the price that I have tested out of China, because now it's not getting too hot and it's got that good screen on it, good battery life, decent keyboard, decent build. Make sure you check out my full review of this particular model if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching this thermal mod here for the Chewy Lapbook 14.1.